This video is designed for the people who are mainly in the consulting services and they don't want to opt for a payroll software especially. So when you have a new corporation, you have lots of anxiety about what we need to be doing, uh, how much payment I need to make for what account, etc. We're going to quickly uh, go side in side with two items. One, what is the requirement proactively to pay to the CRA to avoid interest and late payment charges? One, and number two, how to utilize this file? The file, we call it as a final master worksheet. We revise this file every year because the payroll taxes does get revised every year from the CRA. How to use this file? Uh, there are instructions on this tab, so you can utilize that. But first thing first, what payments you must make to the CRA on a regular basis to avoid late filing fee and penalty and surprises as well because you don't want to pay $15,000 in one shot to the CRA. So those main accounts that you will be making payment are corporate income tax, HST remittance and payroll remittance. In the first year, you are exempt to make this installment because it's a new business, first year in the business and you might not know how much you to pay. So the government allows you to pay after the year end. After the year end, so if December 31st is your year end, you have to make payment by January 31st. After the first year, being second, third, fourth year or fifth or whatever year in the business, you have to make installment payment to the CRA on a quarterly basis. We at Western CPA prefer that you make a um, monthly payment so that you don't miss and you are in the rhythm. So three payments that you should be making on a regular basis, corporate income tax, HST remittance and payroll remittance if you're taking salary as a strategy for your business. If you're not taking salary and you're so solely focusing on dividend, then you don't need to pay the payroll taxes. Let's move on to how to use this file now to accommodate all those things. So the moment you get the file, I very recommend you to go into the corporation uh, info tab and enter the information of uh, your corporation or corp company name let's say the company name is wealth pro business consulting inc this is our form so we can use this as a example uh, federal business number so you have a business number enter your business number without rc rt or rp so let's say seven two one two one one two one one shareholder name so you could say that Chirag is the shareholder, maybe last name. If you are paying salary to the second person and second shareholder is also there, then you can say that um, Joe Smith is another shareholder, for example, right? And there we go. Third shareholder, if you have th three employee and you want to pay. Why this is important? Because then you will not pay CPI for this shareholder employees. And usually in a small business, IT consulting uh, or service industry, owners are the operators and they don't need to pay uh, EI. So here we're going to put uh, Adam Walsh, for example, as this are all examples. So once you complete this, this will populate, this information will be used in on other tabs. Now let's go into the payroll remittance and how it works. So because you entered the name of the company, company name comes up here, because you entered the shareholder name Chirag, Joe Smith and Adam Walsh, they are picked up from there. You are also going to select here are they EI exempt? If they are not your employee, they are not a shareholder and they are third party employees, then you would say no. Otherwise, you would say yes. So, yes is the answer here because assuming that. Now, imagine uh, the moment you put that number there, it's telling your account number, RP001. Now, what happens that if you have employee and you're paying Chirag about $4,000 salary, you put $4,000 for January, this only works for monthly payroll, and uh, this amount only works in a uh, multiple of 500. I'll explain you how. So what it is telling you here, the moment you put $4,000 gross, it says that CPP deduction, uh, income tax deduction, CPP EI is zero because it's uh, EI exempt. If the moment you put no, or because it's a third party, it will also detect EI as well. But we are going to say yes. All right. So then it says that for 4,000 gross, you pay $3,224 to that employee in the payroll, uh, in their bank account. You match the CPP with employees' portions, and then you pay to the government 1003 on a on a monthly basis. What date? 
for the salary of January. It has to be done paid by 12 February. It is 15th of the month, but we recommend you to pay three days early so that there is no confusion and then everything gets paid to the government in time. Now, what I meant to say earlier by multiple of 500, if you put 4200, it will not deduct, it will not show you the right income tax or anything. We have designed this file that works in a multiple of 500. So you can have $500, $1,000, $1,500, and this goes, I believe, up to 15,000. Let's see. Yep, it goes up to 15,000. After 15,000, it doesn't have formula. So it works until 15,000 uh, per month salary. You also need to keep track of this and provide this to us uh, at the end of the year. So we can use T4 based on this information. Now, imagine you have three employees. Chirag is getting $4,500 uh, salary. Uh, Joe Smith is getting $2,500 salary and um, Adam Walsh is getting $22,000 salary. In this case, we have combined total here. So that also explains you that you have to pay $1,833 to the CRA by this date for the month of January. So this uh, hopefully eliminates lots of confusion and question. Uh, we believe that this all uh, employees are owner of the... <laughs> company and that's why uh, 500 multiple works because they are flexible they can do, take 4000 or 3500 you are allowed to change salary every month so next month you can say 3500 i'm taking then the month after 2500 but then month after you want to take 7500 that's perfectly fine you can change the amount just keep track of this log save it every month you change this now when you go to make the payment to cra uh, there is a different article we have uh, written you can go and make the payment for to facilitate you, we have created this account number. So you can just click Control C this and paste it there. You have to pay towards PD7A regular and pay the remittances there. We will provide you PDF when you ask for it that how to make payment, but otherwise it's straightforward. So this is how you have to uh, make a monthly payment to the payroll account. It You must make monthly payment on your payroll account to avoid penalties and interest charges. So this is about payroll remittances. If you have more than one employee and especially third party employee, we highly recommend that you use Wave apps or WagePoint or another payroll software. Uh, those automated software does the direct deposit. So here you will be uh, paying this amount to the employee by e-transfer, etc. And you will be paying this amount manually every month to the CRA versus the automated software cost you about $20 per month, but it will do it will direct deposit to the employee and it will also remit amount to the CRA directly without you being and doing anything. So when you have a third party employee, uh, make more sense to use customized software. But if you don't have any or one or two uh, owner employers, this works perfectly fine for the client. Um, the other automated software also provides uh, bi-weekly uh, or weekly payroll processing or monthly or semi-monthly. So here we have designed this only for owner operator monthly payment and multiple of 500 right so hopefully this uh, resolves the issue for the payroll remittances and how does this work then we move on to the hsa remittance so what we want you to do is most of our clients are on a quick method of hsd where they pay 8.8 percent .8 back and they collect 13 percent we recommend our client to put their collection here in the january how much is your sales including hsd so the moment you put let's say ten thousand dollar plus 1300 HST, the moment you put 11,300, based on quick method, it will tell you that pay $994.40 to the government. And then income tax remittance, in, these remittances are uh, just to pay, pay something to the CRA. You may be required, you may be required to make higher installment based on the previous year history of your corporation. So you can consult, uh, consult us for more details or you can uh, go into CRA login and find out how much increment you need to pay and they will also send you the amount. But we have done this uh, just to uh, pay something to the CRA. Don't take it with the salt and grain. Uh, reach out to us if you need customized solution. Now, when you're ready for January, we also say that pay by 12 February, it's 15th, but 15th of the following month, but we say 12. You just go into GSTP uh, payment, installment only, and then control C, copy this number, put this amount and make a payment. This is RC, corporate income tax. You can go control C again when you're there, pay it accordingly into tax INS and pay it as an installment for this year. 
uh, we have a separate guide for how to make payment on uh, these accounts uh, and with the screenshot. So this is payroll remittance. This is HST remittance. If you pay this, imagine you're taking for uh, if you're making this on a regular basis, and at the end, if I tell you to pay eleven thousand dollar in GST and five thousand dollar in INS, you already have incurred some penalty and interest on here. Plus, it's a lots of money to pay at one shot, sixteen thousand dollars. So that's why we tell people that you know what, make a good habit when you go put pay the payroll remittances and pay the HST and uh, tax INS at the same time and keep this file updated and send us at the end, uh, end of the year so we can complete your returns appropriately. Now, payroll remittance only applies if you are taking salary. Some clients prefer to take dividends only and then in that case, it doesn't apply to them. Apart from that, uh, so this is the remittances, three remittances we talked about, payroll, RP, uh, remittances, RT and RC. So if we have all those things here, now we are going to move into bookkeeping. So in case of bookkeeping, we have two ways to do it, either automated software or Excel. Um, there are a couple of softwares. One is QuickBooks and one is Wave Apps. Wave Apps is free, but it doesn't work with all the banks. QuickBooks is about $30, $40 per month, uh, depending on what model, um, model you take. And it works fine, uh, but you have to do the bookkeeping then by yourself or we can assist you with the bookkeeping. If in lieu of bookkeeping uh, software, you can use this Excel file to keep track of your expenses. Uh, this is only useful for sm some smaller companies uh, doing uh, less than $100,000 volume. Otherwise, we highly recommend the automated software. So assuming that you're doing uh, using this file for bookkeeping, this is your home office expense. So you would do the home office expenses, property tax, uh, management periodism. You don't need to write down a uh, separate month. If you know one amount for the whole year, let's say property tax is $5,750, then you can put it into December as well. You don't need to break it down by month if you prefer that way. That will give you the idea of how much of the, and then how much is the house, how much is the office space, and based on that percentage will be written. So for example, 5750 is the property tax, uh, heating is $1,200 for the year, 1050 is electricity, water is 600, for example, uh, etc. Internet, uh, mortgage interest or rent is mortgage interest, let's say in this case, is 7500. So the total expenses are 16100. 30% uh, is business use, and 4830 will be claimed in the expenses. You can change this to $2,000 square feet house, and then 450 is the whatever, and then it will be 23%, etc. etc. So you can change the way it works best. I mean, the way it is uh, applied to your situation. You are most welcome to separate the amount by month as well if you want. But if you don't want to do that, you can put the one annual amount in the month of December so that it calculates everything properly. Then we can go into business corporation. Uh, these are the category of expenses. If you're not doing the bookkeeping and you're doing the bookkeeping uh, taking from your statement, then you have to put these amounts for these categories, advertising, meals, insurance, interest, business taxes, office expenses, legal accounting, professional fees, rent, etc., etc. And then we have some categories. If you have some item that doesn't fit anywhere, then you can put it in there. So this is what the business expenses you spend from the bank account. Then this tab is for the expenses that you spend from your personal account. It's the same categories, but difference is that here, you, the money went out from your bank account and here money went out from your personal account but expenses are still related to the corporation then we go into mileage for business so you can write down the mileage uh, how much you drive in the each day or you can write write down total mileage of the month in the at the end of the month or you can write down everything like 10,750 kilometers here one shot that's fine so, but we need this information to calculate the automobile expenses. Here, your automobile expenses comes up. How much did you pay in the fuel? Same concept applies. You can break down by month or put it in the same month. Uh, remember, when they audit you, if CR audits you, then you have to provide everything, all the receipts for all this and all the other items as well. So, based on uh, automobile expenses, we will definitely uh, capture those expenses and then we'll prepare your income tax return based on this file. Other withdrawals, uh, if you have taken something as a dividend, not salary, then you can put it here. Otherwise, this uh, tab doesn't apply. So I 
hope I have walked you through the file completely entirely and now you know what to do and uh, how can you move forward and how can you use this file to the best uh, of avoiding uh, automated software cost but if you want to do the automation software please reach out to us as well hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please do reach out if you have any confusion or question after watching this video